Okay, so in this video, I wanted to show you some other ways of solving simultaneous equations, some harder problems. And through that, you may learn some slightly alternative techniques that you could employ. Um, so what I'm looking at here is not um, just two linear equations and trying to find where they intersect. We're looking at uh, nonlinear equations. So we've got uh, some quadratics in there. We've got uh, circles um, and uh, some uh, stranger looking graphs down here. OK, but really, I just want to show you some uh, perhaps some techniques that maybe you haven't seen before. OK, so I'm going to start off with number one. Now, number one, uh, because we've got in both as y equals some function of x and y equals another function of x, um, we can still just put one equal to the other. Okay, So we're effectively substituting one in for the y. So we can write the 2x squared minus 8 as being the same as the x squared minus 5, because if the y's are going to be equal for these two equations, then uh, the right-hand sides must be equal as well. So that's our first technique. And in all likelihood, you should have seen that one before. If we subtract x squared from both sides, OK, we've got that. Now, um, at this stage, I'd probably add the 8 to both sides. So we can get x squared is equal to 3. And then we can square root both sides. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. OK, so we then know from that that we're going to have root 3 something and minus root 3 something. And we've got to work out what that something is. So we can substitute uh, the root 3 and the minus root 3, really, at the same time into either of these two equations. Because substituting either of those in will get us the same result because we're squaring it. So if I substitute it into the first one, we're going to get y equals plus or minus, really, the root 3 squared take away 5. Well, the squared will take care of the root, and we just have 3. So 3 take away 5, and so that's just minus 2. So the y coordinate will be minus 2 in both cases. So that's our, that's our first one. Right, so if we have a look at number 2 then, we've got this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 10, and we've got this straight line y equals x minus 2. Now you'll notice that we're not in the case, in the realm of the first question where we've got y equals y equals. Um, so in this case, what we'll have to do, and the easiest way to do this, would be to substitute our second equation, the y equals x minus 2, into the first one. So the y that's there can be replaced with the x minus 2. So x squared plus, replace the y with x minus 2. So x minus 2 squared is equal to 10. OK, so now we just have an equation in x. So I want to expand and simplify the left-hand side. So I've got that x squared. So expanding those brackets out, x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then we've got the 10 on the right-hand side. So x squared and x squared, well, that's 2x squared. Take away 4x. And then I'm going to subtract the 10 from both sides as well, which will leave me with minus 6. So then I can divide that equation through by 2. OK, so now can I factorise that? Uh, yeah, so that can factorise to x minus 3, x plus 1. So two numbers that multiply together make minus 3, but add together make minus 2. is minus 3 and positive 1. So that means we've got x is 3 and x is minus 1. x is minus 1. So we've got 3 something and we've got minus 1 something. 
Okay, these are the two coordinates um, that are the intersection of the circle and the line. Okay, so when x is 3, we can substitute into the second equation. That's the easiest one to work with. So y is equal to 3 take away 2. So it's just 1. And when x is minus 1, we've got minus 1 take away 2. And so we get minus 3. So the two coordinates of intersection are 3, 1 and minus 1, minus 3. OK, so that's equation uh, question number 2. OK, so... So from those, um, they should seem relatively familiar, OK, those kind of methods. Um, now, number 3... Uh, let's see what happens here. So what we've got now is we've got a circle and a quadratic, a parabola. Now, the possibilities with a circle and a parabola is that you could have the parabola potentially crossing through at four points. Okay. Now, we don't know how many solutions there are, but there could be up to four. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's see what happens. Now, we've got this circle again. We've got y equals. Now, with this question number 2, I substituted the x minus 2 in. Here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to substitute the 1 fifth x squared minus 2 in. Same method. x squared plus... 1 fifth x squared minus 2 squared equals 10. So I've just got my equation in terms of x. So I'm going to want to expand and simplify the left-hand side. So we've got this x squared. Now, a fifth squared is 1 over 25. So we've got 1 over 25, and x squared squared is x to the 4. So I'm also going to get a minus 2 fifths twice, so minus 4 fifths x squared. And I'm also going to get a plus 4, and that's going to be equal to 10. OK. Now, as it stands, um, what would probably be best if I start simplifying this first, I reckon. So um, we've got 1x squared plus 1 over 25x to the 4. Take away 4 fifths x squared. So let's leave that one alone. So we've got the 1 over 25x to the 4. Let's bring that to the front. Uh, we've got the x squared take away 4 fifths x squared, which will leave me with 1 fifth x squared. And I've got this 4. If I take 10 from both sides, I'm down to minus 6. OK. Now, I don't particularly like having to work with 20 fifths. So if I multiply everything by 25, uh, we're going to get x to the 4. Now, five, um, sorry, 25 lots of 1 fifth is 5. So we get 5x squared. And 25 lots of minus 6 is minus 150, isn't it? So minus 150 is 0. OK, right. So now I've got this cortic equation. Now, what you're really wanting to look for here is, is it, um, is it potentially a quadratic in disguise? OK. Um, is there a way of factorising that? Now, it may not be immediately obvious how to do that, OK? But what we're really looking for, is there a way of multiplying two numbers together to make minus 150, but adding together to make 5? OK, so we know that 150 is 25 lots of 6, but that's going to be uh, too much. We've got 15 lots of 10, OK? So 15 lots of 10 will get me to 150. 15 lots of minus 10 will get me to minus 150. And they add together to make 5. So x squared 
uh, plus 15 x squared minus 10 should factorise it. So we're going to get the x squared times x squared makes the x to the 4. We've got x squared times minus 10, uh, which is minus 10x squared, plus 15x squared makes me the 5x squared, and 15 lots of minus 10 gets me the minus 150. Brilliant. OK. Now, could the x squared plus 15 be 0? OK. Now, if you move the 15 over to the other side, you get x squared is equal to minus 15. If x is a real number, okay, which is all we're dealing with here, then there's no way that I can square a real number and end up with a negative. And so x squared plus 15 cannot be 0. There are no solutions to that equation. If there had been, uh, there could have been two solutions to that. If that was minus, I'd have two solutions there, two solutions there. And that would be my four solutions that I was talking about earlier. So, no solutions there. So that means the only solutions can come from x squared minus 10 is 0, which means that x squared would have to be 10, and so x would have to be plus or minus the square root of 10. OK? So there are two solutions. There are two points where this parabola intersects this circle. So we're looking more at a situation that looks something like that. OK? Right. So we've got positive root 10, something, and minus root 10, something. OK. So what are the y values? So what we're going to want to do is substitute the plus or minus root 10 into either of these two equations. Now, because I'm substituting it into the x here, the minus or the plus, it doesn't matter. You're both going to get the same result. So if I substitute them into the second equation, y is equal to 1 fifth times plus or minus root 10, doesn't matter, squared, take away 10, take away 2, sorry. Well, plus or minus root 10 squared is just 10. So you get 1 fifth times 10, take away 2. Well, 1 fifth of 10 is 2. 2 take away 2 is 0. So that means in either case, we have 0 as the uh, y coordinate. So the two coordinates of intersection between the parabola and the circle are root 10, 0, and minus root 10, 0. OK. So here was a problem that ended up with a hidden uh, quadratic. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at this question number four. So question number four, we've got x squared plus y squared equals 10, this circle. And we've got x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 10, another circle. OK, now with this, it's not so obvious as to how we're going to deal with this. Because we can't just do a straight swap. We can't substitute. We don't have one of these equations in terms of y only, like y equals uh, some function of x, sorry, and able to substitute it into the other. We can't do that. So now we're going to have to start employing some slightly different techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the, and simplify the left-hand side of this um, equation, this number 2, OK, this second equation. So if I expand that, I get y squared minus 4y plus 4 is 10. OK? So if I rewrite this so that I've just got equals 10 there, OK, I'm going to now call this equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do equation number 1 and then subtract equation number 2. Okay. Now, this will feel a little bit like um, the elimination method for two linear equations. Now, this is a special case of it working, because what's going to happen is that the x squareds can go, the y squareds will go. Now, if I'm doing equation 1 take away equation 2 here, I've got nothing y, 0y, take away minus 4y, which will just give me positive 4y. 
and I've got nothing take away 4, so minus 4, and then I've got 10 take away 10, which is 0. So y would have to be 1. So that's my answer for y. So I now know that I've got potentially 1, perhaps 2, answers here. Okay. Now, when you're, you've got two circles, either you've got two possible solutions, 1, 2, or you've got just the 1, or they completely miss each other. I know that there's y equals 1, so it's either one of these two situations. Okay, so if I substitute 1, the y is 1, into either of these two equations, if I substitute into the first one, I've got x squared plus 1 squared, which is just 1, is equal to 10. So x squared will be equal to 9, so x must be equal to plus or minus, oh, sorry, not root 3, just 3. So we've got 3, 1 and minus 3, 1. So there are two intersection points. So it is this situation up here. OK? So kind of like a spin on the elimination method there in order to find where those two circles intersect. OK. Let's have a look at number five. Now, number five, we've got this 10 equals x y, x, y squared, and we've got 20 equals x, y to the 4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call that equation number 1 and that equation number 2. Now, we've seen that we can put equations equal to one another. Um, we can substitute one into the other. Um, we can subtract one from the other. Number five is a situation where we were actually a good idea to divide one by another. So I'm going to do equation number two divided by equation number one. So that means I'm going to have 20 divided by 10. And I'm going to have xy to the four divided by xy squared. Now, the reason why I would do this is that it allows me to have x divided by x, which disappears. So I've got 20 divided by 10, which is just 2. I've got y to the 4 divided by y squared, which is just y squared. So that means that I can square it both sides, and I get plus or minus root 2 as y. So I'm going to have two points of intersection, and I've found the y-coordinates. So if I substitute those into um, one of these two equations, if I substitute into number 1, the plus or minus root 2, I get 10 is equal to x lots of plus or minus root 2 squared. Now, substituting in positive or negative root 2, it doesn't matter. I'll get the same value. So 10 is equal to, well, that's just going to be 2, so 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and we get 5. So the two points of intersection are 5 minus root 2 and 5 positive root 2. OK? Now, they're my answers. What I would definitely suggest with all five of these is to make sure you know what they look like have a look at them on Desmos or Autograph or GeoGebra, okay, some graphing package or on your graphical calculator, and have a look, see what these actually look like. Um, you might have some difficulty programming them into uh, a graphical calculator, um, especially with the circles and uh, these ones. So I'd go onto Desmos, have a look at that, and just see if uh, where these points are and what these curves actually look like.